Hunter x Hunter, exam arc, episode 18. Lirio got bit by snakes. Big X time, X interview. What? <laughs> I'm confused by that title. Yeah, I mean, they were battling it out. They had a trap battle. I like Ponzu. I wouldn't touch him. I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd touch him. I mean, how many snakes can there really be? Whack a snake. Oh, Ponzu, what did you do? At least someone's using bees. Allergy lore. I want to put her in the same category as My Hero Academia's Mushroom Girl. Super unassuming, but the most deadly somehow. Why does she look like a like a Pokemon main character? This is a, this is gonna be their whole career, isn't it? Hunters fighting whatever they're fighting, but also fighting hunters. Who's the hunter? Who's the hunted? Damn, she's got a passive B ability. Oh, it's a hive! She's got the B perk. I don't, yeah, I was about to say, I don't think she cares very much either way. <laughs> Why is that so surprisingly cool? Maybe you can use your bees to fight the vipers. Do vipers experience anaphylactic shock? That's, that's a big assumption. I am shocked they care given this exam so far. Where was that concern when people were just cliff diving into the abyss and getting decapitated and getting lured off by slender fingers in the forest? Or worst of all, being made to run? I hope she joins the party. To be fair, she did. Still, I feel better with them in the cave than outside of it. Yeah, you figure he'd have the antidote, right? Well, I just feel like Gon is the kind of kid who's been bitten by a viper before. He's definitely been bitten by a snake, at least. I believe in whatever he's doing. <laughs> whatever he's doing, I just, it's gonna work out. It's going. He's got some some snake trick, some viper insight. He knows something about vipers that I don't. I think. <laughs> I assume. Going also is just crazy. So he got. Oh, he got bit or smushed. I see. The strategy was just <laughs> get bit, but get the antidote. Yeah, that was, wow, that was a gamble. Gohan really leaps before he looks. Courage is one word for it. Yeah, it's getting there. You've come a long way since the boat. Right, I mean, you have plenty of tools in this room. The vipers. Yeah. Gon can definitely hold his breath for five minutes. Gon can. Shocking. Bro, who is this kid? <laughs> that means they're they're willingly gassing themselves right now. Oh. 
Cohen's gamble inspired another gamble. I love how he carried all of them out at the same time. He could have, like, taken one, <laughs> taken a breath, and, like, gone back. But nope, Lirio literally being carried. Hey, he kind of played her there at the end. <laughs> but it saved her life, so. Wow. Gohan looking like a real G in this episode. Gohan becoming the master of option C. Meanwhile, Ponzo not even bothering with option A. Out of all the gambles in this episode, I think the biggest gamble was trusting the examiners to come and save you. Also, that, that cheeky attitude from Gohan there making me even more convinced that him and Klua are a perfect match. Fair enough. I feel, or maybe I hope, that this is not the last we've seen of Ponzu. What are you? Oh wait, there's more. They're always last minute. Lirio has no idea what happened. Did I do it? Did I do good, guys? Hey. <laughs> Reunion. Oh, that soured the whole mood. <laughs> He's barely alive. <laughs> Perfect. It's perfect. Turns out the ultimate power in the show is having Gon and Kurapika as friends. Got a lot of new blood. It's a new generation. Wow, we're heading to the final phase. What a journey it's been. What could top Battle Royale? I don't actually, I'm terrified to know. Death match. Are none of them questioning if they still even want to be hunters at this point? I just realized, is Tompa officially out? Tompa's gone? Maybe I'll, I might actually miss him. I kind of wanted him to pass. Here it is. And the third phase, and the second phase, and the first phase. <laughs> it's okay, we're used to it. That's more for himself than it is for them, they don't care. It's just what they wanted to do. Oh, here's the interview. Yeah, going is triggered by the name. Why do you want to become a hunter? I love killing strong people. If he passes after that answer, just confirms everything I've worried about for this exam. This industry. Yeah, we've met. I was wondering about that, right? Like, if he's looking for raw potential. But what is this leading to? Maybe he's matching them up by who they say they most want to fight, or maybe least want to fight? It's like speed dating, but death. Soga is crazy intimidating. Too weak. <laughs> Interesting that he chose Gon, but the reasoning feels totally different. What are you? He knows. Right. He also punched me in the face really hard, and I owe him one. Oh, Gwen just doesn't want to fight his friends. I'm so, so intrigued. Like, it's so early in the show. I know it's a long series. I just can imagine so many possibilities with Gon and Kalua. I feel like this, these early episodes are really important for establishing their friendship. Kalua wants to fight Gon, but Gon would hate it. Not sure what to make of that exactly, but it just, like, struck something. Solid answer. I think he was looking for matches, yeah. At this rate, it's Sissoka fighting everyone. It is a really interesting test, though, if that's what it is. Facing what is potentially your, your biggest threat, your biggest fear, head on. Can't believe it. Why would you be surprised by anything that Sherman would do at this point? <laughs> Everyone against Soka? What is it? Everyone against Gon? Everyone against Leorio, <laughs> the ultimate challenge. 
kind of lost, lost some innocence. He like had an awakening to the real, real world, to death. And also, this kid is not used to failure. It's like I was just saying about Leorio last episode. It's not so much about the achievement of the thing itself. A big part of it is how you achieve it, what it means to you to achieve it. Oh, yeah, he's, he's a kid. He could use a hug or, 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 okay. Give him some space, I guess. Let him just cry it out. <laughs> he has such a great recovery time. <laughs> I don't know, that's pure, that's purity. A pure cry. That's what it was, he channeled it into something productive. I mean, I get that, like, I, maybe that is the answer, right? You go through a period of helplessness, your conceptualization and framing of what you are, who you are, has just been rocked. Hard to reason your way out of a hole, like, as much as I've tried it, I'm pretty convinced that despite all the, the energy we put into, like, thinking positive, you're trying to fix your mind with your mind, so it's like building a house on sand. And a lot of times there is reality or weight to the fear or anxiety or pain that is causing the, the internal hell. Much more productive than trying to write a fiction you don't believe in is to write what you do next and therefore what you think you are through action. I think that going back and thinking your way to feeling better is only useful when you can really identify a way your thinking was flawed or like a way you internalized an experience that actually was just not accurate and to be really convinced of its inaccuracy. Like I have experienced that being useful when I, I go back and look at my childhood and realizing the, the assumptions that were causing me pain I actually did not really hold up under scrutiny. It's just that they were they were formed with my childhood brain and I just hadn't re-examined them in so long. Casting any light on them at all made them quickly fall apart and therefore I could actually be meaningfully convinced of whatever the new story was, just updating the framework a little bit. I think you can reinterpret old evidence, but in absence of that, I think the best course is to create new evidence of, of what you would like. And from there, I think the, the more character-based or self-directed it is, the more actionable it is, and therefore the greater chance of success that you have in attaining it. So Gorn had a moment of being incapable and he went out and did something incapable. There you go. And that's both. That's the other side of it, right? Like re-examining the weak, useless, helpless view of himself that he experienced with Hisoka. Yeah. yeah. I'm very interested to see the final exam phase. But yeah, I mean, maybe the most important thing they got out of this was not the, the Hunter license. I mean, this is very cliche, right? But it feels especially true in this arc. What they got out of this was their friendship with each other. The Hunter world clearly is a rough one. It does not reward trustworthiness. It does not reward... <laughs> scruples. There's every incentive to be like a murderous deviant. Having a team that you trust feels like a huge win. And there's certain things they've witnessed in each other in this exam that show beyond a reasonable doubt that it's authentic and not a game they're playing. Kurapika really high in that scale. I mean, there, there was no benefit to her helping Leorio that I can see. Gon is just so unabashedly who he is. I feel like you can't help but to trust him. Kalua, an odd one. Like, I feel like I trust him for Gon to a point because what happens when their ideologies clash but there is something definitely genuine and warm there but it's not clear to me yet that that's the highest thing leading him he has a massive chip on his shoulder no limits leorio seems like a really decent guy i mean i think i just like him as a person and so i'm saying that partly out of just desire but also his stated motivation for being a hunter you know helping others he's got a good heart i mean the only reason i would say leorio is a question mark up to this point is because in order to establish your trustworthiness i think or your code of honor and ethics you have to be in a position where you can win or gain an advantage through unfair means and Leorio just seems to not be able to win much to my great amusement.